Okay, so let's go, go, go. <laughs> go, 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 go. Um, I'm Will, and this is my second PL Wonks talk of the season. My first was a job talk, and that was not a will talk or a fun talk, um, but it was a very useful talk, and I thank everyone who was here for the criticism and suggestions they gave. Um, especially Amr, who is not here, who just said, be yourself. And also Zach, who said, with your other talks, you had so much enthusiasm. So I just wanted to give a will talk, and also I guess Aaron was supposed to give a talk today, and he couldn't, so we weren't going to have a talk. And Lindsay's like, you kept promising a StarCraft talk. So I said, finally, I'll have to do it. And so here is my long-promised StarCraft talk, and the reason I haven't given it is that I've been afraid. I'm afraid that I can't do justice to the beauty of StarCraft. So sort of like uh, people call soccer the beautiful game, but I don't really see the beauty. I just see people doing poor acting and taking flops, you know, and pretending to be headbutted so that they can get a red card on the opponent. <laughs> That's what I see in that game, right? Um, so anyway, I'm just, uh, I guess I got a couple objectives today. First of all, I just want to give a fun talk. It's always fun to talk about things you care about. Um, also, I just wanted to share something about myself that I'm really into. So I think uh, most people here know that I'm really into 3D printing and Arduino and Scheme and teaching computer science and all those sorts of things. Uh, there are a couple of things I'm really into, like rock climbing, which I'm epically bad at, but I really like. Um, I'm interested in Egyptian history and hieroglyphs. I haven't really figured out how to tie that into computer science, other than maybe if I did some NLP stuff. Um, but StarCraft's the other, the other thing that I've really been into for the last uh, year or so. And, um, and it seems like the time is right, because whenever I wear one of these t-shirts, like my Gosu t-shirt, which I bought from the Handsome Nerd, uh, which is run by the casting archon of Tasteless Nartosis, who casts for the, <laughs> the GSL in uh, Korea, which is the premier StarCraft II uh, tournament. <laughs> yeah, I can tell there's going to be a peanut gallery talk. Anyway, when I wear this shirt, okay, I can give a specific example. I was wearing this shirt, uh, what's today? Friday. I was wearing this shirt on Monday when we had the final for, or is it, no, maybe it was last Friday. It was either Friday or Monday, because I always order pizza from Mother Bears, and when I went up to get the pizza from the pizza delivery guy, he looked at this shirt, which I will explain what this means in a minute, but he looked at it and he immediately asked, do you play StarCraft? <laughs> and I said, maybe. <laughs> and he said, oh, I bet you're into day nine and all this stuff. We started talking about a Husky and all this stuff. Anyway, and he's like, oh yeah, all the people in Mother Bears, they are into it and they all play. And they got mad because some car was honking at him, so he started yelling at him, so I didn't talk to him. But the... <laughs> week or two before when I was ordering pizza, I walked with one of my students to the gas station on Indiana and 3rd to pick up some drinks. And the guy behind the counter saw another one of my shirts and said, oh, do you play StarCraft? I watch Husky a lot. Dan and I took a trip to Closure Conj, uh, I guess last fall. And that was, yeah, October or something. And that was in Raleigh. And sitting next to us on the plane was an IU student. And uh, we started talking about Scheme and so forth. And then we started talking about StarCraft. Um, so it's at the point now where if I wear one of these shirts that I have, there is at least a 50% chance that during the day someone will mention StarCraft to me. In fact, it turned out when I was preparing an early version of this talk, which I didn't give, I was actually working at the Irish Lion just because I could sit there forever and like they wouldn't kick me out. And Tom, who is the, the guy who, the server, who is the guy I've known for a while through the Locksport Club that meets there, he came and um, when he saw that I was reading about StarCraft, turns out that he was the publicity manager for an esports um, organization in the late 90s, and he was intimately familiar with StarCraft, right? So it's just on and on and on. There's a lot of interest. Um, in case you don't know, StarCraft is the most popular real-time strategy game ever made. Um, there are actually at least three StarCraft games. There was the original StarCraft, which came out in 1998, and I just realized today that it, I was 27 when this game came out, so that really 
uh, dates me, but I sort of like to think I grew up with StarCraft, even though it's not quite accurate. Um, this is the original CD I had in 19, or the case, the CD is, I don't know, probably my computer. Alas, this game no longer plays on the new Macs with Lion because they don't have Rosetta anymore. Uh, this is the strategy guide that came, uh, that I got in 1998, and it was like immediately out of date. Um, so it, later in 1998, Brood War, which was an expansion pack, came out. Um, and then it was 12 years until StarCraft II came out. So this is a guide for StarCraft II. Yeah? Did you take questions during? Absolutely. Uh, so did Warcraft 3 ever approach the popularity of, of the StarCraft? Or I think it started to approach the popularity. Certainly, um, it had a big pro scene. And I think the pro scene in China maybe was bigger than the StarCraft scene in China. Um, when work, when work, uh, StarCraft II came out, several of the top Warcraft three pros switched to StarCraft II. So uh, Moon was one of the top, maybe the best uh, player. He's in StarCraft. Uh, um, Todd uh, was a top player. So a lot of that kind of went over. Um, there's a lot of debate in the, in the so-called esports community about why the popularity of these games has sort of risen and then fallen dramatically over time, and now it seems to be rising again. Uh, one complaint about the Warcraft 3, which is another real-time strategy game from Blizzard, one complaint um, about what happened there was that there was one team that started playing or paying their players like outrageous sa uh, salaries, and then the other team started doing the same. This is when it looked like esports was going to go big, and then that one team folded, but the other teams had already sort of spent them, overspent themselves, and um, also with the you know recession and things like that, dot com bust and so forth. You know there were um, financial reasons that maybe Warcraft three uh, receded, but um, regardless, um, when Brood War came out in '98, it was a perfect time in Korea. For the game to take hold because of, of several factors. Apparently, one factor was that um, there were games coming out of Japan, but for sort of historical and cultural reasons, a lot of people in Korea didn't want to play Japanese games. They, um, so, so that was one aspect. Another thing was at the time, South Korea's internet and infrastructure, IT infrastructure, was really coming up to speed. They were going to get super fast internet. Um, at the same time, over the period of, of just two or three years, there was an explosion of PC bangs, or PC bang, I believe is the way it's pronounced, something like that, uh, by Koreans. So these were little internet cafes. So apparently in Seoul, where sort of all of this is clustered, all the competitive uh, StarCraft stuff is sort of clustered in Seoul, uh, apparently in Seoul, most people live in relatively small apartments. It's just very expensive to live in a city. So if you wanted to hang out with friends before school, after school, after work, or whatever, you would go to these PC bongs in your local community and just hang out and play games. So they're not just an internet cafe the way we think it. It's more like they're more like the upscale arcades from the 80s with like you know lights and stuff like that. And people will go there and they'll just spend all day or two days without sleeping, you know, in one of these places. So um, that was very much part of the culture. And the way the costs worked, it was actually cheaper for a lot of people to go to the PC bongs because they would have a bunch of games loaded on the laptop or the PCs, so they could play lots of games for less than the cost of buying the games individually. So, so people would go to these PC bongs, and this was exactly the time where StarCraft came out, and that was loaded basically on every per or every gaming machine in South Korea. So, people just got into it, and then um, after. A couple of years, it became so popular that there were TV stations dedicated just to StarCraft matches. There were big uh, arena events. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of videos, giving you some sense of how big it was. So um, even now in South Korea, and, and you could argue that we're already past sort of the prime of Brood War. It seems like League of Legends is really catching on, for example, in, Star in uh, South Korea. But um, at its peak, certainly, uh, StarCraft rivaled baseball, basketball, and South Korea for popularity. In fact, it probably exceeded those. And you could have a stadium event with 100,000 people going to it live, and then millions of people watching online. In fact, I watch, uh, or I saw something on Team Liquid recently that there was a Brood War match, and apparently one out of five 
high school age Korean males watched it live on the internet. So that's, it's still incredibly popular. Um, StarCraft II hasn't taken off in South Korea as much. Uh, one reason is it's not considered to have as high a skill cap. You don't need to be, you don't need to have 400 APM or 300 APM like Flash to, uh, to play it effectively. Um, there, there are other reasons, I think. But, um, but when Blizzard announced StarCraft II, they announced it in South Korea. They didn't announce it in the United States, even though it's a camp company based in um, the U.S. So apparently there are 11 million copies of Brood War sold, and 4.5 of the million were sold in South Korea. It's incredibly popular. It's, it's sort, of, sort of a cultural thing. It's like a national sport. Uh, and, and Koreans are very proud of their tradition of StarCraft dominance. Um, and in fact, KESPA, which is the Korean Esports Association, was actually something that was created with government support. So the, the Korean government supports the development of esports. Okay, um, it's hard to imagine that in the United States, if like Obama's running on the support esports category. You know, Warcraft Three just didn't have enough support. That's why it died. So, you know, we need to really support League of Legends or something like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but in Korea, that was a big thing. It's especially since they wanted to develop a high tech industry and so forth. So they saw this as a way to they wanted to start developing a homegrown um, game industry and so forth. Uh, now I'm a little, yeah, Michael, do you have a question? Yeah. Go. Um, I would say to a large extent that has to do with Twitch because the AI in Starcraft, the original Brood War was pretty bad and you had to control like your individual workers, um, you know, individually separate them and tell them to go to mineral resources, so like, things like that. So to, to be a top pro, you need 200, 300 APM. Um, and, and according to Day9, who's a famous caster, in StarCraft II, you could be a top competitor with something like 70 APM, as long as you use it very carefully. Uh, so that's definitely one big difference. And I'm going to show a video of what it looks like when a Korean pro, what, what it looks like from the uh, viewpoint of a Korean, Korean pro you know, spamming APM on a keyboard. Uh, you'll see what that looks like. Um, also, you know, the other thing is that it took a long time for Blizzard to balance the original Brood War. There were a number of patches over the years. Um, and StarCraft II is still relatively young. It just came out in 2010. So the, the common belief among the pros is that no one actually knows how to play StarCraft II, and it will be years before they do. So uh, there are these shifts in what the people call the metagame. It's sort of like even if they don't change the game mechanics, so they don't patch something to make one of the three races more powerful, over time people will figure out more dominant strategies, and those will become popular for a while until someone figures out how to counter that. So um, so even in Brood War, which wasn't patched for years, there would be long-term changes in, in how people play the game. OK, so uh, I could talk about this all day, but let me just show you a couple, couple things. OK, so first of all, I'm going to introduce you to the basic idea of StarCraft through a video by um, Husky who's a famous caster, so let's see if I can. Our story begins with some more than awkward scientists known as the Zelnaga. Arriving in the Milky Way galaxy, the Zelnaga started poking around with different species to drink something with purity of form and purity of essence. First, they found the protons, a race of awesome looking psychics who started messing with their brains. Getting way excited about it, they went too far and caused the protons to fall into madness. The Zelnaga abandoned the protons, really not wanting to deal with the cleanup, and found the Zerg instead, a race of odd, worm-like creatures with the ability to absorb the genetics of their victims. Going for a different approach, the Zelnaga created an over... Okay, so when it says the, the kiki there, uh, so these zerglings are saying kiki. So that's Korean. Um, that's a translation of Korean for laughing. The kiki ki. It's often done with three keys, but anyway. Unfortunately, the overmind was far too small or sent troops to destroy the Zeldog and take their knowledge. Meanwhile, the Protoss, abandoned by the supposed gods, healed their brain places and expanded their occupied space into the inevitable complicated game of Twister that was sure to happen. Happily watching over the Terrans from afar, they finally focused on the Zerg and a, oh, we should get rid of these sort of fashions. The Zerg, having noticed the Protoss way before and wanting to assimilate them, were busy on nom on the Terran planet, hoping to assimilate the Terrans and utilize their very psionic potential. Unfortunately, they didn't happen to notice when the Protoss moved in and, in an attempt to save the Terrans, annihilated the world of Chazara. The Terrans, unaware of the reasoning, panicked, and a war against both alien races began as the Terrans flailed under their mercy. And then, you get to meet Jim Raider. You're welcome. Have fun. 
Okay, so that's basically it. Um, yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really all you need to know about the background. Okay, how do I get back to my... The last creature? Um, Jim oh, Jim Rayner, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Rayner is following me on Twitter, by the way. The actor who plays Jim Rayner, Robert Clotworthy, is uh, following me. I don't know why. I think I think someone from ClosureCon found out that I like playing StarCraft, and they tweeted it, and then I tweeted back something, and I guess he just like looks for people who tweet anything about StarCraft or StarCraft Two, because he did the voice of Jim Rayner in the original, and he just follows him. Anyway, so he's following me. I was like, really? Uh, that's kind of cool. So, there we go. Was that? Yeah, yeah, I absolutely should. Okay, so uh, that's the background. And I could show you the um, the launch trailer, but I'm going to just show you a couple of... Okay, so when I say it's popular in Korea, like, I'm not kidding. So this is a Korean Air 747. Alas, when I flew to Korea on my way to uh, um, Cambodia, we didn't fly on the StarCraft 747. But there was a young man uh, who was flying with us from Atlanta. Um, and then when we, I forget where our second leg of the flight was. We flew from Atlanta to, I forget where the hub was. But there was a guy who was on the same flight, and he was really young. It's like a young white guy, and he was wearing like, baggy uh, track pants and a hoodie, right? And just kind of, you know, it was like, looked like he was about 20 years old or whatever. And when um, we realized we were on the same flight, my dad's like, oh, are you going to Cambodia also? He's like, no, I'm going to Seoul. <laughs> and I just looked at him and I said, StarCraft? And they said, League of Legends. And I'm like, oh. uh, And he's like, how did you know? I was like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, that's, they're serious about that. Um, I want to show you another thing that gives you a sense. I had another video like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one too, actually. I'll show you that one. Yeah, I wanted to show you one more. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll get to that one. Hold on. Okay, this is an Intel commercial in South Korea. This is Girls' Generation, which is a Korean uh, popular K-pop band. This is Slayer's Boxer, who's the most famous StarCraft player in history. <laughs> now, that's much better than our Intel commercials, I think, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, yeah, so the, uh, yeah, the crazy StarCraft fan, I'll show you that one, then we'll move on to, okay, here we go. Okay, so in, well, one of the reasons these games are so, so great is that Blizzard played a, paid a lot of attention to the details, so if you ever played Warcraft or StarCraft or any of these games, you know, if you click on one of the, uh, the units that will make sounds, right? So this is this is an obvious non-native English speaker doing the unit sounds from StarCraft, the original Brood War one. Uh, and this is on television. In fact, there's a whole range of these videos, like Korean comedy show videos where people do these stuff. This is one of the better ones, I think. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, when I was in okay, so when I was in uh, California, was it last summer? Was that when did you guys get married? Was that okay? Last summer, um, Lindsay and Alex got married in San Francisco, and I was supposed to fly out one day, but it turned out that the um, MLG Major League Gaming StarCraft tournament was going on. Uh, and I didn't miss the wedding to watch it, so that's to my credit. But the day after the wedding, okay, I had to drive. I was supposed to fly back, but I found out that there was a bar craft happening at the Mad Dog in the Fog in San Francisco. So uh, Justin from Justin TV, if you've ever heard of that uh, site, he was like it was like a live blogging site. Um, he started this uh, bar craft in San Francisco. So this is this is actually a relatively small barcraft. So you know it's just like a sports bar except people are watching StarCraft. Um, and usually the bars will have different drinks and things like that, uh, or different menus based on StarCraft drinks and things like that. So this is this is like a big bar craft. This is one in Montreal. This had a thousand people at this event. Uh, <laughs> was that? Yeah, they're watching live. They're watching a live tournament. No, no, they're playing in Anaheim or Dallas or whatever. Okay. So these are people who weren't fortunate enough to go to like MLG Columbus. Like I went last year. Everyone should go to MLG Columbus this year. It would be awesome. Um, yeah. So this is like a nerd's dream, right? <laughs> and it's just cool. If you're really into these games, it's cool to go to one of these events and have someone next to you like say, oh, I was in the bathroom. What build are they doing? Or whatever, right? And you can like, immediately start talking. Or it's like, oh, Terran's so OP, or, which is overpowered. Um, OK, so let me show you a couple skill-based uh, videos real quick just to show you what it's like. Um, where's the keyboard one? Oh, yeah, here's, OK, so this is demonstration. OK, so uh, one of these players is Moon, who was, I think, the top Warcraft 3 uh, player in the world um, at one point. And uh, he talks about how Warcraft 3 doesn't need high APM like StarCraft does. I think that's true because they improved the mechanics. But um, uh, this will give you some idea of what, of what it looks like when a Korean pro is playing. Actions per minute. So it refers to how many clicks. Oh, what's their APM? Well, it depends. Like, they, they can be up to 400. 200 to 300 would be competitive in Brood War. I'm not exactly sure how it's calculated. Now, there are actually two APMs. There's effective APM and actual APM. Because a lot of people will just spam the APM just to warm up their hands. And you'll see the Korean pros will have like hand warmers. Because they keep the boost. They play in these isolated, sound isolated booths on the main stages. So that they can't hear the commentators talking about the game. And they, they keep the whole stadium really cold. Like if you ever go to the of these events, you should dress really warmly. Because the whole thing is refrigerated. Because that keeps the players like sort of their attention level high, but it keeps their hands cold, so they have to have like hand warmers and all this stuff. So they're really into it, and they all have custom keyboards. A lot of them use like DOS keyboard, which Gavin has one. Um, yeah, so so that's considered slow APM. Yeah, that's Warcraft three. So he's he, he doesn't have to go very fast for that game. <laughs> yeah, so it's the mouse actions and the keyboard actions are 
calculated for the APM. So, so at least in StarCraft, everything's hotkeyed. So do you see here, he's going to his different production facilities and telling him to make units. So that way he doesn't ever have to change the screen. So he can fight a battle sure. while still, yeah. So. But He's not thinking about all these actions, right? No, he's, he's just, got them internalized. He's automatically cycling through these different factories yes. and pressing build. Exactly. Okay. Well, well so he's, he's, he, actually, if you watch it really closely, he's probably doing something smarter than that. Yeah, so, um, so when you start getting like, so this a lot, you internalize different things, right? So you say, oh, I need to build this unit. And you know, it's, okay, well, I always have a hot key to six, so I'm going to attach this, and then I want an immortal to use that I. But, but it's not this thought of, oh, I, I need immortal, but I will have to press six. And then hit, uh, it's, you know, it's, oh, oh muscle memory. Yeah. Sure, I'm just wondering if he's doing 6i in the middle of doing something else that he's consciously Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it becomes background noise. For your thing right. Like yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I wonder at that point why they don't allow timers, or, you know, if, you, if you're starting some process that's one hertz, <laughs> rather than doing it yourself. So, you, yeah, so, 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 this is the Aaron Todd complaint again. Against StarCraft II. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is this is one of the big debates about StarCraft versus StarCraft II, right? It's like uh, in StarCraft II, you can have these really long build queues, you can have all these hotkeys, the workers are pretty smart, and so a lot of the Korean pros are like, oh yeah, you can, you know, any noob can just like A move and press A to make Marines or something like that. Um, in practice, the high level pros are still doing really effective builds, but it looks like in the uh, near future, some of the top Brood War players will be switching to StarCraft II, and then we'll see how good people really can be. Because the really good StarCraft uh, Brood War players, none of them have switched, because why would they? Uh, Flash, his salary is something like $500,000 a year, plus I think he gets all the endorsements and stuff like that, and he's like a national hero in Korea. Why would he switch to another game where he might not be as successful? But it looks like um, he may be switching soon. So, uh, well, it looks like the pro the problem is Brood War. Although it's a great game, it came out in 1998. The graphics look like 1998. You know, the production. You know, the resolution is 1998's resolution. Um, the new game looks so. Starcraft II was, if not the first game, certainly one of the first games designed from the ground up to not just be a competitive esport. A game, but also to be a spectator sport, which is one of the reasons it's addictive. So, uh, what, one thing that's interesting is that the people who watch the tournaments online, a large percentage of those people have never played the game, right? They're watching it just like people might watch football, even though they've never played football. Um, so, it just looks shiny, it's easy to follow the actions, right? And also there's pressure from newer games like League of Legends or Dota 2, which will be coming out, whatever. But are there still only two video feeds for the two players? Ah, okay, so in a televised match, the way, or, or in a tournament match, um, each player can see their screen. Then there's usually a caster, which is maybe two casters. So someone who is in the game as an observer, they can see anything. Okay, and they can move around. At the highest levels, at le uh, the GSL, which is the best tournament for StarCraft II, they actually have someone who's called an observer, someone who's not casting, and whose whole job is to click on the mini-map in the corner <laughs> to make sure that you're seeing the action. Because when the casters are talking and bantering back and forth and so forth, it's easy for them to miss action. So uh, not only do you have, have casters, but you have observers, so people who never talk, they never interact with the audience in any way, but their job is actually important. But it's still uh, roughly the same UI. They don't, they yes, don't it's still the same UI. That's right. It's they still the same UI. Different portals of the world just for the purpose of... That's right. For example, you can't zoom out to see the whole world. That's right, exactly right. Uh, and it turns out that this causes problems sometimes because in StarCraft II there's no LAN support. You have to go through Blizzard servers. So there's a famous case where someone was observing a game, someone named Chill, was observing a tournament game, I think it was at MLG, and that person started lagging, and it slowed the whole game down. And one of the casters famously typed, chill out, um, and <laughs> get out of the game. So um, so that became like a StarCraft 2 meme. Um, so let me show you.
Okay, that brought up something. So you do get kicked out Well, someone, yeah, someone can kick you out. Let's see if there is a. Uh... Okay, so yeah, so this is. Okay, this is what it looks like. Um... Okay, this is what it looks like when people are casting a StarCraft II game. So this is Idra, is a very famous Zerg player, famous both for his quality of play and also for rage quitting. And this is MMA, who is a top Korean player. Okay, so let me, this was at MLG uh, Columbus. I was in the crowd watching this game. This is a very famous game. So Idra is a guy named Greg Fields. He started playing uh, Brood War. He moved to South Korea when he was 17 to become a pro player. Uh, his choice was, I think he got a scholarship in physics from RPI. So he had to decide between that and going to Korea to become a pro brewer player. So he went to Korea and lived in a team house. So in Korea, they have apartments that have bunk beds. They're basically barracks, right? You got bunk beds and you got a bunch of Korean pros living there. And all they do is play StarCraft all day. So contractually, they're ob obligated normally to play 12 hours a day at least. But in practice, they play more like 14 to 18 hours a day. Um, and they play normal. They might get two days off a, a month when they start out. Uh, if they want a date, they need permission from their coach. Um, so it's a very regimented thing. So Idra actually um, grew up in that environment, but he never really achieved the top ranks for Brood War. Um, but in StarCraft II, he's had maybe he's certainly become more famous, although his success has been mixed. Uh, MMA was a, a player who wasn't really that well known before this tournament. So let me try to explain what's going on. MMA is playing Terran, that's like the Earth, the human-like race, and he has a bunch of these tanks, the siege tanks, and he's building, or he's landing a, um, a command center which will allow him to harvest uh, some minerals up here. Um, and Idra and MMA, they're in this close game. Idra thinks he's a little behind. The gold minerals are here which actually uh, give you more resources than the regular blue minerals. So if MMA can keep up this command center, he'll have a huge economic advantage. Um, Idra has these flying uh, Zerg creatures called Mutalists out on the screen. So let's see what happens when MMA lands his command center. He lands his command center at the gold, and then his siege tanks, he accidentally misclicks on his own command center and he starts <laughs> shelling it. Okay, so... The, imagine, okay, there were, I think, 10,000 people at this event uh, in this cavernous stadium, right? We're all watching this game. This is, a, and Idra is a crowd favorite, right? So, and of course, the thing is, everyone wants the foreigners to win or do well. Foreigners being anyone not from Korea, right? So the fact that Idra is American, they're like, yeah, that's great. And then he gets the Koreans, but they just, you know, the Koreans have been so dominant that people just like anyone to have a good showing. So, Idra is a, sort of a crowd favorite, so each time this, that one of these shells hit, the crowd gets louder and louder, so let's, let's hear it again. Wait, hold on, with that level of access to medics, how could more than one possibly hit before he started? He was looking, he was obviously looking at something oh, else on the map. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he was like fighting a battle or something. Also, it has like the whole, like, kind of... Yeah, so, so like here's... Like, like, like one click, you know, if you selected all the tanks and you clicked on it once, it's like, okay, that's six shells. Yeah, like, but you'll see it actually takes, I think, four, oh, yeah. it takes four or five rounds. Can we see his viewpoint on the mini-map? No, we can't. So this is the observer's viewpoint. So here's the mini-map, and you can see it's sort of split in half. This is the Zerg, and this is the Terran. Um, so, and then we get the little sort of face cams for them. We're seeing the everyone view. So the, the uh, people observing the game could switch it to see MMA's view, but normally they keep it with the everyone view. So let's see what happens here. And listen to the crowd as it... <laughs> okay, so at this point, the crowd is going insane because they think that Idra has probably just won the game. And not only that, but it's great just seeing this high-level Korean grandmaster destroy his own, you know, it's like, that's something I would have done, right? Uh, so now everyone thinks, okay, Idra's going to take this game. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so, so, okay. At this point, everyone is convinced that Idris is going to win, right? Everyone's convinced Idris is going to win. Yeah, so I was one of the people in the... Okay, so what happened was Idra is not the most patient player. And he didn't realize that MMA had destroyed his own gold command center. And it looked to him like his attack was failing. So he just quit. He rage quits. Okay, this is very typical of him. So he's about to win the game. And then he types GG. And what Marcus uh, Graham, DJ Wheat, said, what? I think what he was thinking was that Idra was typing GG prematurely, telling the other person basically GTFO, and thought, oh, Idra's being bad mannered or BM, but it turned out that he was just quitting because he was mad. So, <laughs> and then the whole crowd, which was just going crazy, was just like, <laughs> and even, even the casters were just like, what? DJ was like, Uh, so I saw that. That was a bit of StarCraft lore. That's become very, very famous. Uh, that happened in Columbus last year. Uh, Did you have a No, I, I was... Okay. I uh, considered showing that, but... The Day 9 what? The number J. Oh, the number J. I don't have the Day J one. Um, I do have... So Day 9... This is one of the guys who was casting that game. He's a very famous caster. So he likes doing impressions of units. This is a uh, that's a fusion core for making battle cruisers. This has also become a famous StarCraft meme. So there are, I don't know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of fan videos like this now. Um, some of them are very inside jokes. Like, I can't even show, that one's maybe a little bit of an inside joke. But um, what the thing we're missing in StarCraft II is uh, some of the ceremonies. So in Brood War, there's a famous player named Firebat Hero. This, here he is. And uh, he's very flamboyant. <laughs> uh, for some reason, people in South Korea are shy. They don't like having their faces on camera. So, so this is him before he's won the game, right? <laughs> um, let me show you. This is probably the, his best ceremony. Okay, so he's won this game. He gets a bowl of steamed rice, because apparently this is an insult in Korean. You're my steamed rice. It means you're a newbie. There, this is in uh, 
I don't know where exactly this might be in Inchon, but anyway, it's it's right next to the beach, and I don't know if you'll see a, a cut of yeah. You can see how many people are out in the crowd. There, there's <laughs> probably tens of thousands of people, and the thing is, like, he had this all prepared beforehand, right? So it, whenever he loses, you know, it's like the world has lost a piece of art. <laughs> And they ban this sort of thing in NFL, right? <laughs> oh, he won. <laughs> so there, there are a bunch of these ceremonies that he has. Um, anyway, uh, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, yeah, okay, so another interesting thing is because in order to watch the game, you really need to be seeing, you, you almost need to have uh, a caster explain to you what's going on, and you certainly need to have an observer showing you the screen. So um, this gives you a sense of, first of all, how popular the game has become. So this is MLG Anaheim. Uh, so this is the line for autograph. And it keeps going and going and going, going and going and going. Okay, let's see who's at the end of the line. Is it the top Korean pro? Is it Slayer's Boxer? Is it Idra? All right, we're getting to the end, and it is... Day nine, the caster. The longest line isn't for the player, it's for the caster. So this would be like if you had access to any NFL player and everyone's lining up for John Madden, right? Um, it's just, oh yeah, and this is one of the players, like, typical APME. Actually, this is kind of slow. Um, <laughs> But anyway, I find that very interesting that actually the casters are just as famous, if not more famous, than the players themselves. I think uh, that's a little unusual. Yeah? So I have a question on the APM part. So sure. um, I didn't see much of these tables. Was that all, did you keep it all left hand? There, yeah, the, there are different layouts. There's a grid layout you can use. So playing all three races it matches sort of the command card in the lower right. So, so normally you want to keep your hands here. Um, normally one through nine would be used for for various hotkeys for your uh, unit producing structures and armies. There's a joke um, in Brood War, you could rally your uh, army units to one, two, and three, so you, and A was attack moves. So you do one A, two A, three A, that means you could just send your units out across the map, they would attack things automatically, and no one cared. Um, so that was sort of a, a joke for someone who's not doesn't have a lot of skill or APM, they would just 1A, 2A, 3A. Now in StarCraft, because StarCraft 2, you can select all your units and put them in one control group, which is bad style, but you can just 1A. Uh, so this is an example, a small example of how people think it's like not as skillful. Um, so let me just show you what... But there's a different grid layout where you don't have to use the right hand side of the keyboard? Uh, yeah, basically... Well, the key starts are programmable anyway. Yes, yeah, so they're all programmable and uh, for the most part people just um, use well, left-hand side. Also just use that keyboard that they use. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so this is Idra, uh, the guy who GG'd, doing a split at the beginning of the game. So it's actually kind of hard to see what he's doing. Um, but he splits his, his units so fast that I had to watch that video like three or four times um, to see it. But uh, I'll show you right here. Okay, so this, this is in Brood War, which is much harder. Okay, so to select your workers, in Brood War they're stupid. You have to send your workers to individual mineral patches and they mine more efficiently if they're on different mineral patches. So the first... Yes, they line up and wait. So the first thing you do when you start is send all your minerals to mine and this is part of where the APM comes in. Like you could see 
you have to be able to, you know, super fast kick, click and stuff like that. And that might be the difference between getting a few more minerals out, might be the difference between making one more marine, and that might turn the tide. So this is just like a sort of a simple example of the sort of thing you have to do at the beginning of a game when you have four units. You can imagine what it gets to be like when you have, you know, a hundred units and a bunch of unit produ producing structures. So um, when I try to do this, I usually just like miss and my workers just sit there. So I don't even try. I just like grab them all, move them. Um, and the thing is, you could watch a pro player and they'll do this a hundred times in a row and they'll never miss. They'll just, they'll do it perfectly every single time because they practice it tens of thousands of times. Um, all right. So, oh yeah, here's one more celebration. There is one uh, celebration. I saw I saw uh, one of these too. <laughs> So, this is a murloc. This is MC, who's a Korean. So he's known for being uh, very flamboyant, also. And yeah, so that that's a the murlocs like what is that for World of Warcraft or the Warcraft three? Okay, yeah. So yeah. No, he okay. All right. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, here we go. What's that? Exhibition match. That's right. We're going to do a show match. <laughs> yes. So here's what I do. Everyone in the room, pick a key. <laughs> All right. So where's, here we go. All right. So I'm going to... Try to play. Uh... <laughs> Star guy, what? <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah. I was just going to say the reason I asked about reaching was because long ago in Warcraft 2 days, what I would do is uh, you just go down with me with the mirror, one side of the keyboard and the other, so you can use the flip side. <laughs> oh, sweet. Well, well, weren't weren't there weren't there? Pro, um, I remember Cameron saying something about keyboards being banned. Weren't there keyboards that had like macros built in? Okay, so I'm going to try to play two quick games. The first game I'm going to play, I'm going to do a standard build, a Baneling bust. I'm going to play uh, Zerg. And the reason I'm doing this is that this is a build I know in and out, and also it's... What's that? All right, so here's my build. Nine Overlord. Fourteen Gas. Okay, build. this is a build order. So this is a build order for a Baneling bust. So the idea is, so this is the order I'm going to do things. I'm going to produce, you, can, you have these structures, you can produce things out of it. Um, I'm going to produce an overlord, which is necessary for supply. So the supply is how many, basically a cap on how many units you can have on the screen at once. Um, if you're playing Zerg, which is the race I'm going to play, you can only have 10 supply. You start out with six workers at six supply already. So after you make a few drones or workers, you're going to be supply capped. Once I make three more drones, I'm up to nine workers, nine supply. I can't make anything else until I get more overlords. So I'll make an overlord on nine, drone up to ten. When the overlord pops, I will do a twelve scout actually, send out my worker on twelve. And then I will drone up to fourteen. The fourteenth worker I'm going to turn into a gas geyser, on the Vespian gas. As soon as that pops, I'm going to put in three workers in gas. I'm going to throw down my spawning pool on fourteen so I can make zerglings. I'm going to drone up to 15, and then I'm going to make another overlord. And then I'm going to show, um, oh yeah, so then I'm going to make a queen. As soon as, as soon as my pull finishes, I'm going to make a queen. 
and I'm going to make, I'm going to get speed on my banelings, and I'm going to make three sets of lings, which are little uh, dogs, and they're called in Korean. Um, they're these little fast creatures. And then I'm going to get a baneling nest with the next 50 gas, and then I'm going to bust down the wall of the Terran or the Protoss. If it's Zerg, I'm immediately going to quit because it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> Two out of three is fine. Yeah, but you can't like bust them, right? I want to show the bailing list. I would do a different strategy against her, but I'll just quit. I'll rage quit. Um, <laughs> that's the first thing I'm going to show you. The reason I picked this is that um, basically the game will be over by eight minutes. I will either either have lost or won uh, very quickly. Eight in-game minutes, which is faster than the normal clock. After I do that, I'm going to go on there and I'm going to cheese someone, which means I'm going to try to do a build that's going to make them so mad that they'll either BM me, they'll start like calling me names or worse, or they'll just rage quit. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I have, yeah. Uh, so if I wanted to choose someone, is there a vegan option? <laughs> yeah, it's called a candy crush. It'll yes, be that's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, just a word about this. So I'm playing what's called a ladder game. So I'm playing anyone in the basically the America server. Um, used to be North American and South American, but I think they merged them. Brazilians have a really bad reputation for being BM uh, and choosing. But anyway, this is probably one of the easiest, if not the easiest server. Korean server is considered the hardest, obviously. Um, you can get accounts on the Korean server, but you need someone's the equivalent of their social security number. So you have to do a little low-level identity theft. Their companies are specialized in that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, there are websites you can go to if you want to, you know, some Korean grandma get her social security number so you can play StarCraft. But she probably already is doing it, so <laughs> too bad for you. Um, I'm doing, uh, so, so there are different ranks. You start out bronze. There used to be, was it tin or copper in the beta? Copper, okay. So bronze is the worst. Silver, which is where I'm at, is fifth best. Not not second worst, fifth best, something like that. There's silver, and then there's gold, and then there's diamond, platinum. No, 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 sorry, platinum, diamond, masters, grandmasters, Korean. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty low down. I probably will be lower down after uh, the next few games. <laughs> What is cheesy about cheese? I'll show you in a minute. So what's cheesy about cheese is it's a strategy that should certainly fail if they scout it. And it has no late game option, basically. Um, either I just think you're bad, or I'm really bad and I don't know anything else to do, uh, which is more likely. Or I just want you to rage, because. Or I'm making fun of you by thinking Yes, yes. Now that's more like trolling. I do have some trolling videos that are hilarious. What's the same thing for that view? You know, like, did you rage quit like, after like, totally destroying? Well, who did that? Uh, I think who was. I, I knew you were talking about this. Because they didn't make it through. Somebody was trying to. Oh, yeah, that was the Masters player playing off race. Right. So sometimes players will lose matches intentionally because they want to get down to bronze so they can work their way up and just like crush the noobs. So I was playing a Masters Zerg player. Oh, okay, so I'm Zerg. Okay, I don't have to rage quit. No, 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 no
I won't rage quit. <laughs> Really? What is it? Uh, you actually have a preference for the mirror matchup in the random. Really? Yeah, very small. Oh, no. You're trolling me. No, I'm not. All right. There's my sick worker split. Now I'm going to hotkey. <laughs> yeah. Can <laughs> you set my rally? Don't teach your grandpappy how to chew cheese. <laughs> There is a rally. You're just too slow. You're too chobo to tell. No. Too chobo? Too chobo. All right, so I'm on 9 supply. You can see my supply up here. I'm a 9 out of 10. My build's pretty sick so far. I'm going to make an overlord. <laughs> I'm going to send that out to my gnat. Doesn't really matter because I'm going to cheese this guy. Drone up to 10. I'm going to test the... Well, I'll do 12 scout. All right, so I'm supply block 10 out of 10. I have to wait for my OV to pop. Got two larva. We'll see what my APM is at the end of this game. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be... Yeah, I don't think it's going to be 300. I can try spamming. Okay, so I'm a 13 supply. Yeah. Okay, so on my 14th drone, I'm rallying to the gas. I'm going to go ahead and get that. I need to, to scout. I should have scouted a little earlier. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm making gas. Spam little APM. If I'm Korean, I'd just be like, oh. <laughs> I should be doing, like, hey, there's my drone, and go back to my, hey, you know, make another worker. Um, okay, I throw the, whoops, throw my pull down. Six, three drones, send them my gas. Okay, I've droned up to 15. I'm going to get an overlord. Okay, send that there. All right, six, six, six. I'm getting gas now. 100 gas, I can get speed. My pool is going to finish soon. My, my worker is sent to the wrong place. Wait, what? Oh, okay, good. Whew. Okay, they didn't early expand, obviously. Oh, Zerg! <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is ruining my uh, MMR. All right, I'm gonna cheese this guy. Yeah, I'm gonna six full. All right. Sick worker split. Watch. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Whatever. So did the pros still work in StarCraft 2? By the pack you seem to auto What was that? <laughs> it doesn't matter because it's. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> I would type that, but I'm afraid I'll lose outright because my, my, uh, yeah, I don't want to lose the larva though. I probably could have made one more drone at the very beginning. I can't make it now. Zerglings, yay!
That's uh, imbalanced. All right, so now I'm supply block. Clearly, I'm back down in the bronze leagues. <laughs> Ah, uh, pulling drones, pulling drones, sick, sick micro, bro. <laughs> Alright, this this is like the definition of an all in build. There's no there's no plan B. <laughs> like I said, there is no plan B. Herp derp. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to say herb derp a lot. Oh, he's got a queen out. That's sick. No! I missed. Oh! Oh no, the queen is OP. a decent map for bailing bus actually okay <laughs> yeah I didn't even try the split on that one okay there's a good place for an overlord like right here Well, he can unpause. Yes. Oh, you need a bathroom break or something? Oh, okay. <laughs> if they know what they're talking about, they should say go, go, go. Oh. All right. They should say, go, go, go. How do you do 50? Okay. All right. So I'm up to nine. I need to make. I'm not even gonna bother Scout because Yeah, they can only be up here. Alright. Drone up. I mean I really should twelve scout. Okay, so I'll twelve scout. No, that was just a uh, um, multiplayer game you can use that to tell like say I need up this point to you. Oh okay. Alright. Get my gas. Okay, this build's pretty sick. Okay, rallying my Skyline drone. Two, tell my drone to go do 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 do. Oh, a little slow on that. Get my pull. Okay, drone up to 15. Uh, so it won't get us around if the well, if I was playing Zerg. 
Uh, it's just habit. Like, uh, if Zerglings are rushing you, like a six pull, that keeps them from surrounding the whole thing. Uh, okay, it's throw a three in gas. Oh, I'm not clicking very well. Okay. All right. So. Given the current metagame, are there any conditions in which you can spread out builds? Like, these tanks have splash damage, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, there are all sorts of tactics you can use. For, for siege tanks. Nah, I don't, I don't, yeah, they already had double guess. I don't know, obviously attacking real, real hard. Okay, so get my queen, get my... Oh, did I forget Novi? Oh, no, I forgot my overlord, it's supply block, this sucks. Okay, gas, gas, gas. Yeah. Come on, okay. Alright. Come on, overlord. Come on, overlord. Okay. This is going to be sick. Don't worry. I'll be all right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, go back there. My queen's going to pop. Okay, do I have 50 gas almost? Time for a baneling nest. Really shouldn't let him scout this. Okay, inject my queen so I get more larva. Rally up here. So what is your method for paying attention to block scouts? Um, really what I should be doing with those lings, I should be A-moving them and trying to deny, uh, at this point actually, if he sees my scout, it's probably still too late for him. Do people actually use, what is it called, that patrolling feature? Uh, yeah. They, um, that can be very effective for denying, uh, early expansions. You can make sure someone doesn't throw down their buildings fast enough, stuff like that. Okay. Ah, there we go. All right, so bailing nest. So I should morph six of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on, six. Come on, six. There we go. Come on. Oh, overlord block. Okay, this is the difference between me and a pro. Okay, so here's my banelings. Hotkey those on two. Okay, hotkey these on one. Oh, whoops. Uh -huh. Misclick. One, two. Two, A. Two, A, there. One, A, here. Oh, ho, 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 <laughs> yeah, you better lift it off. <laughs> yeah, you got your one marine out. How's that helping you, Brohan? Yeah, so now, now now the guy will feel like morally obliged to flow his buildings off to the corner until I make error, just because I was VM. Oh, uh, the queen is necessary to inject larva. I didn't need to. So top top, I just quit. Um, because I I mean I didn't want to. Was that? No, uh, there there are going to be two. There's heart of the storm is coming out sometime next year, and then legacy of the blue. Well, they can have like right? one so 
Yeah, they've applied a bunch of patches already. Okay, so I'm going to try a cheese. Um, so I'm going to switch to Terran. And uh, if there's Zerg, I'll just rage quit. But if they're not... Okay, so I'm going to try to show you a quick strat. This is sick. I'm going to Planetary Fortress Rush, uh, which has a success rate of about 25% at low-level bronze. It might. Okay. All right. This 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 will be the last game, and then if people want to play, I know there are a bunch of people here who have uh, Starcraft on their lappies. We could even get like a noob match going and cast it. Uh, I'll probably try making a another supply or another uh, command center. Okay, so the first thing you have to do when you do this build is you have to try to hide your uh, eBay. Yeah, so okay, I'm gonna build everything here so I can float it over to their main. Uh, I would, but it just takes too long. They'll, if they have any clue and they scout, they'll see that something's up because I want to build a barracks in time. Okay, so the chances of this succeeding are slim. Yeah. It's been a while since I've done this. It turns out it's not the most uh, effective strategy. All right, I shouldn't be queuing up my workers so much. Okay. All right, now if this person has a clue, they should know that they're signing up now. If they've scouted. I don't think they've scouted that. Have you seen them? Has no. seen anything on the map? Yeah. I, I'm probably like playing like mid-level bronzies now. I'm so bad. Yeah, I quit. Uh, yeah, I rage quit against the uh, high bronze. <laughs> I may drop leagues. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think I got enough. I think it's 150 gas. All right. Pull my workers out of gas because I'm. Uh, it's 400 minerals. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how much what? Oh, the upgrade. Yeah. Okay. This is going to require sick micro of my building. <laughs> Ouch! Yeah, I, I definitely am going to. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so let's see. What? It takes 150, 150. Okay, cool. You will see. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's at four fifty. Okay. What is this? Okay, this is perfect. This is this is perfect actually. Yes. Okay, watch this. This is this is gonna be hilarious. Watch, watch how sick this is going to be. He's got no idea. He's got no idea what's up. This person is really, really bad. Okay. 
Planetary Fortress. Whoops. <laughs> Put these on auto repair. Okay, now this is this is the funniest part of it all. I can mine his minerals. <laughs> okay, they're 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 killing everything, but it doesn't matter. I don't. I mean, I I shouldn't win this game. Still, it doesn't matter. It's just for the lulls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm building a, a I'm building a fortress in his main base. Yeah, and actually, what I need to do is research. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. I guess I don't have any. All right. Obviously, I'm going to need a gas. I'm going to need more workers. Rally into the gas. <laughs> okay, now it's time to repair them all. Okay, now watch this. <laughs> Okay, mineral trick, mineral trick. Yay! I, I, yeah, you just use a little cheat to get out of that sicky situation. I know. Okay. Don't never forget to make workers. There we go. We could turn this into like a ride at Disneyland. <laughs> Artosis pylon. No, no, it is. So that's the game I won. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Um, they would never, first of all, they would have. First off, you go expand somewhere else because what they're going to do with the planetary forces can't float. Yeah. It, it, the, the real answer is they would never have let me land at the beginning. Um, so, anyway, I think uh, um, there are tons of cheesy things. Okay, I'll show you one cheese, one more cheese, just because this is so good. And then anyone who wants to play can play. Uh, this is actually this. Yeah, this is pretty much the best cheese ever. Uh, sorry, what? Okay. Okay, so so what's going on here is that we've got uh, Protoss versus Terran. So I was playing Terran last time. And as you probably noticed, Terrans can lift off their buildings, right? Okay. So this is a two-player map. There's only one location where the opponent can be. So if you're Protoss, you know that your opponent has to be here, okay? So all your strategies... Are relying on that. The other thing to realize is that sometimes there are glitches on ladder and the software doesn't behave quite right. Okay, so let's see what this Terran player does. Okay, so first of all, the Terran player kills one of their workers. They started out with six workers. They kill one of them. Now they got five workers. They load them into the command center. They haven't noticed. Notice they haven't mined any minerals this game. Okay. <laughs> uh, they actually can't make anything. Now they're just flying off their command center to the corner of the map. Okay. Well, that doesn't seem like a very effective strategy so far. Any strategy that begins by killing one of your own workers. Okay, here's a pylon that the uh, Protoss has decided to make. They're obviously going to do something like proxy gateway or maybe uh, uh, have one. Okay, so here's something the player typed in. Syntax error 523, player is out of sync. 
there used to be these sink errors in Brood War. Now the, now the Protoss is coming in to scout, and there's nothing there. It's a two-player map. How could there be nothing there? <laughs> uh, they apparently did not see the command star flying. It was just out of range. Now they're, it's just floating all the way down. They put the gateway in. <laughs> what are they going to attack? <laughs> <laughs> and then Protoss player quits. Um, so why did they? Because their command center can only hold five workers, and they didn't want to leave anyone behind that or the, or the opponent could see it. They wanted to make it look like it was some sort of error, and that they actually never started playing the game. So they typed in an error message. Anyone who had half a brain would realize the error message was coming from the other player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was that? Yes, which is totally ridiculous, but uh, very convenient when it comes to that sort of thing. Okay. Well, um, I think that's it. It's it's time for the Pwncraft Two trailer, and then then we can uh, play some uh, some games. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the, the, uh, it seems on ladder that the opinion of My Little Pony is about split in half. <laughs> well, we were playing, and didn't someone when we were playing, someone said GLHF every pony. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, like the, yeah, the other we were playing three three. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got like a zillion videos and stuff, but. Um, so I know a number of people have laptops with it, so if people want to play, um, can play. You can even have like a little noob show match or something. But uh, if you got to leave, that's fine too. So anyway.